Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. Thanks for um, making the time. Really appreciate it. Nice to see all of you again. Um, unfortunately, a large number of our members will not be able to join us today. Uh, most of them have not got kits yet. Um, we've only been able to get some sponsorship to get some people some kits. So I think we've got like um, 12 to 13 or 14 people. And normally we should have like 50 to 60. But uh, we'll try and sort that out in the future. Sorry, we have 17 participants. O okay, thanks. 17, thanks. Thank you, Chidi. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, Dr. Fatai to you. Um, he will give a quick um, introduction of himself. And I have his slides with me, which I will share. I will share my screen as soon as he finishes his introduction. Once again, apologies for the lateness. Fatai, over to you. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gentlemen, sorry, there's no ladies here. Um, right. Yes, sorry, I apologize for all the uh, troubles we had. Um, my name is uh, Olaskomi Fatai Salau. I'm a GP. Um, my background is general medicine, considerable length of time uh, in uh, hospital medicine, uh, which I specialize in gastroenterology. But now I've been a GP for over 14 years now. So I'll be quite happy to talk about hypertension and diabetes this evening. Thank you. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you. And okay. Now, the reason why we picked hypertension and diabetes, it's uh, this is a very common illness, particularly in the uh, ethnic minority group and uh, people over the age of 40. And I hope we'll be able to talk about these uh, illnesses and way to uh, manage it. Next slide, please, Amy. Right, hypertension. While we're talking about hypertension, there are some other things because the kind of cross link with diabetes in terms of uh, the things that causes them. So we'll I'll probably talk about diabetes along the line as well. So now, we, we call hypertension and diabetes a silent killer. The reason being that they usually give no warning. They're there. People do not even know they are hypertensive or diabetic. Uh, they just go for the routine annual health check, and that's when the, it's picked up in most cases, which is the, is the best thing. You want to pick up that way rather than when they are now presenting with complications. Um, so we will... Sorry. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Yeah, please. Uh, I want this to be as interactive as possible. If anyone has any questions, please, I'm, I, I'm quite happy to take that along the line. Right. In terms of uh, hypertension, the, the blood pressure is a kind of a reading between anybody over the age of 18 to 80. We, have, we expect a reading of 140 over 90. If you are all outside that limit, then we consider you as being hypertensive. Uh, and you can see we have a slide of a heart here. We'll come back and talk about that. So let's go to the next Page, please. Thank you. Now, there are two ways. They, one of the ways is we have a home monetary blood pressure device. This is you buying your kit from Tesco, Hazard, or Amazon. Check your blood pressure in the morning. Check it in the evening. Write it down. Do that over five to seven days period. And then you compute the average. If that reading gives you anything more than 140.90, then you consider yourself as being hypertensive. That's one way of doing it. The other way is what we call ambulatory blood pressure mon monitoring. That could be organized by your, uh, your GP. And what they do is to uh, fit you with a blood pressure monitoring device. You have that on for 24 hours. And then they take the average of the blood pressure reading, and then they come up with a diagnosis of a high blood pressure if it's uh, more than uh, uh, 140-90. Uh, and then the, the other way is when you go to your doctor's surgery, you have to go three occasions. So we need a uh, average reading of three, three different times. We're talking at least a week apart. You go this week, you then the following week, and the third week, or any, any other time. Any reading consistently raised blood pressure over that three, uh, period of time will be considered as being hypertensive uh, at that time. But now, with uh, our availability and access to all these devices and technology, we really favor people doing the home monitoring blood pressure type. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Now, sorry, just in case I'm talking too fast, if you, uh, you can please let me know, then I'll slow down a bit. Uh, it's just fine. Now, we have uh, three types. There are many classifications. The Americans classified hypertension into four types. They said stage one to four. 
Uh, but here in Britain, we make it simple, mild, moderate, and severe. The mild abstention is a type when, when you have your blood pressure just slightly over 140. It's not really, it's between 140 and 150. And then the, uh, the bottom part is between 90 and 95. You classify that as being mildly abstention. Anything beyond uh, 150 and above to 160, thereabout, then you start talking about uh, moderate hypertension. And anything above 180 is systolic, and a diastole of more than 100, you're talking of severe hypertension. And the treatments are quite different for, for all those three categories. Uh, we'll talk about the treatment later on. Now, it's nice to talk about why are people hypertensive. The 95% of people have what we call essential hypertension. We use the word essential abstention because there's no reason, well, there's no known cause for it. It's just something that you get in life as you get older. So once you hit 40, your blood pressure starts narrowing, the pressure inside your blood pressure, your, the inner part of your blood, uh, your blood vessel, they start narrowing, which is age-related. Atheroma, cholesterol, lipids, they start depositing inside the lumen of the blood vessels. In that, uh, because of the narrowing of the vessels, you need more pressure to pipe the blood, to pump the blood through. So once you're applying more pressure to pump the blood, that's what we're referring to being hypertensive. And essential hypertension because of those narrowing. So that we use the word essential hypertension. Uh, and the other types of hypertension that is about 5% of cases are usually due to illnesses, secondary causes, like people who have kidney failure, kidney diseases, people who have connective tissue diseases, and people who have severe anxiety. We wouldn't use anxiety as a cause of hypertension, but people could have raised blood pressure when they have severe stress in their life, severe anxiety. But that's a temporary thing, because once you manage that area, you should be fine. So those are the other group of 5%. Those are the ones with uh, secondary uh, causes, like mental health issues, uh, uh, kidney failure, connective tissue diseases. Uh, next slide, please. Right. Now, the, 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 the danger, like I said, they are silent killers. They won't tell you anything. You just go about, I'm fine, nothing's wrong with me. They can affect any organs uh, in the body. So start from your heart, you know, the heart that is pumping blood. Uh, that's where the... Uh, uh, trying to use it in lay time, the, the blood pressure is determined by the, how much blood you are pumping out of your heart. When that we, use, we use the word stroke volume for that. When you pump the blood out of the heart, boom, and then you have to look at that, the stroke volume and then your heart rate, the rate at which your heart is pumping. So let's say your heart rate is about 70, uh, uh, 70 beats, boom, and then the volume of blood that is coming out in that time, you, you multiply them together and then that's what gives you the blood pressure. Stroke volume, Stroke volume and multiply uh, uh, by, uh, with the heart rate. That's what gives you the pressure that mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about. Now, the conditions we're talking about is when you are pumping so much blood, your body, your body is overworking itself. It's pumping to the kidney. It's over, it's an overdrive. At the end of the day, the kidney was like a like an engine, like a car engine. It will it will knock, and you, you the kidney will pack up. blood. that's kidney failure. That's one thing. So that's when people usually say, "Oh, my legs are swelling. I'm getting tired all the time." Uh, things are not right. They go to see the doctors and they find that they have kidney failure and then you now find that it's secondary to the hypertension. The other uh, things that have, uh, other organs that it could affect again is the brain. You know, people have uh, high blood, uh, blood circulation into the blood vessels, the, 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 the circulation of the cortexes in the brain. As, is, as that's going on, it's knocking off the vessels in the brain it could lead to stroke. So people could have uh, hemorrhagic stroke or thrombotic stroke. You know, uh, so that, that, that's things people do not, you know, people just wake up in the morning, they end up having a stroke, and then they find out they've been hypertensive for years, that has been untreated. Yeah. And the other one, again, is the heart, is where it's coming from, it could lead to a heart attack, you know, and people just come up with heart, heart attack, and then you find out, oh, they've been hypertensive for years, and things like that. So those are one of the complications that we've talked about, and there are some other mild complications. Oh, sorry, sorry, Fatai, what about the yes. eyes? What, what, what are the implications yeah. of the eyes? Thank you very much. I'm leaving that to talk about when we go to diabetes. Because okay. it, but it's nice you mentioned that. I like that. Now, in one of the diagnoses, when you look at people with hypertension, you look into their eyes, you can suspect that they have attention. You probably won't do anything to your eye, attention itself per se, but there are telltale signs that you're hypertension when they look into the retina. It will show all the classical signs that, okay, the, the vessels are under tension, they're under pressure. So uh, we'll talk about that more with diabetes. Okay. Um, okay, so next slide, please, thank you. Yeah, so we're showing the organs of the brain. This is a very lovely convoluted brain. You can see all the gyri, all the socket. Those are the pulse. 
that's what you need a brain to be like. But when people are hypertensive, they, it won't be like that. They'll be so smooth because you cause problems, you cause damages. The, the blood's best, the, uh, the, 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 there's a pressure, there's a damage to the supply. So when they are lacking in those supplies, then the brain becomes so smooth. And when it becomes so small, you know, you're, we're, we're talking of stroke. That's, that's a catastrophe. That's a fatal uh, outcome. But some people who come with dementia, which is very, very important. We have to be mindful of that. So they have what we call uh, vascular dementia, and that is due to hypertension. Uncontrolled hypertension will lead to vascular dementia later in life, which behave the same thing like Alzheimer. The only difference is with Alzheimer dementia is people with Alzheimer dementia, they just every day they are confused. They don't even know where they are. But with vascular dementia, you see them one day, so oh, this guy is fine, he's good. Then the next day, it's a different guy again, like a split personality. He's forgetting everything again. Then it, you know, so that's the difference between the two. So the one caused by hypertension is something you can avoid. You can do something about that. Uh, please, next slide, please. No, we go to the next slide. We use this in that. In diabetes, uh, when it comes to diabetes, we talk about that. Yes, this is the, the picture of the back of the eye. We talk about that in diabetes as well, when we come back. Okay. We need that study in any. So that's the heart. We talk about all this, but that's the way it should look like. Okay. It could damage the same thing with kidney. Fine. So fast forward to that, uh, uh, to diabetes. Let's quickly talk about diabetes now. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, let, let's come back to the first side. So right, life, the, the treatment for hypertension, which, like I said, it, it's, uh, it's very important. Everything here is lifestyle. Lifestyle is very important. Our lifestyle, very important role. So we have a choice, and you can make that choice now. Diet, diet can never be overemphasized, and then exercises as well. You know, making people ourselves active as much as possible. That's the treatment. But we're so busy these days that we do not even have time to do all these things. And we, we pick our foods on the road. We don't do exercises, and then we end up being needing doctors to, to help us and paying more money to look after all these things. Now, the the good thing about this forum, which I quite enjoy. People are taking their diet so, so seriously and their work. I can see some of us doing the work now. It's, I mean, it's fantastic to see that happening. So you've done half of my job by doing that. In fact, when you do all those things, you don't need me for anything, please. <laughs> but but if, you, if you fail to do that, then you need me to go to the next step, which is A plus C plus D. So those are the treatments, uh, uh, the, the, the regime, the medicine we use in hypertension. Hypertension is trying to kill, kill us off. Let's go back 50 years, 100 years ago. The average life you know, span in, in Britain was less than 50, 100 years ago. You die by the time you're 50. Now it's 88. People die at 88 in the average life span. You could go into 90s. Now, uh, if, you, if you do all those things, you know, follow medical advice and look after your health seriously. What has done that is the way this treatment has been uh, revolutionized. So we're talking of A. The A are the group of drugs we call the ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors protects the, uh, the organs of the body, especially the kidney. It controls the blood pressure. It lowers the blood pressure. Not just doing that, it protects the kidney as well from being damaged. So that, that's the ACE inhibitor. That's the first line of drug of choice for Caucasians. I have to emphasize that. For Black Africans, it doesn't work for us that good. Uh, but these studies were done with Caucasian study. The reason being that it works on an, a, a kind of um, receptor in the kidney. It's called a renin. Renin and utensin receptors. Renin, when it stimulates that, that's the way it brings adosterone, it brings down the blood pressure. Now, in a black man, our renin is overstimulated already. So I don't want to go into the genetics of that. We are already under fire all the time. So there is nothing for this thing to stimulate anymore. We are high there with renin. So ACE inhibitors doesn't really a drug of choice for us. So the next stage is calcium channel blocker, which is the, the, the drug of choice for the black people. That's the amlodipine, the common one you see, amlodipine, Low the pain, they are hooked, they end up in the fed the pain, had a lot, which is uh, the, the, the common name. So that's our own drug of choice. So, uh, so we start with um, uh, so AC vitals, next uh, calcium channel blockers, and the last one is diuretics, which are the water, water tablets, rosemide, vendofumetazide. That one takes the fluid low, uh, level, it, it kind of unloads the volume in the, in the blood, vessel, intravascular volume. When it depletes the volume, then the blood pressure falls. That's how it works. So we have ACD. We used to have a beta blocker in the past, but that's been taken out now. So we have ACD. Now, the, uh, the, the problem with hypertension, like I said, you start with AC inhibitors, which probably won't work for you, mm -hmm. and then you bring in calcium channel blocker to hold on to it, because one tablet is not enough. It's outsmarting you. It's trying to kill you, and you're saying no. So you have to bring all these agents in. You, uh, 
more usually you see people on three three or all the three classes of drugs even more because there are other ones as well so when they are not you have to control the blood pressure the one of the uh, the, the one group can only bring the blood pressure down by maximum 10 millimeter of mercury let's say your blood pressure is 180 so if you use a you will bring it out to 170 so what do you do from 170 you can't sit there that's not acceptable so you bring the c agent in you bring it up to 160 then you bring the d part in you bring that to 150 that's as far as this thing could go so you need all those combinations with all the things as well. Because you're on the drug, does not stop you from doing your lifestyle. Your drug does not stop you from doing your diet. And, your, and one thing that is very important with hypertension is salt. If you love salt, please try to train yourself not to. It's your enemy. It doesn't do you any good. So please try to adapt your tongue to state that you could do without it, if possible. If you must eat salt, go for a low, low salt, low salt, uh, there's a low, low, uh, slow salt one. There is a low sodium salt now that's available in the market. Please. And what, I, oh, sorry, what about sugar? Um, I'll leave that to Mr. Diabetes as well. Uh, sugar, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's the worst one. Let's start with the easy one first. But you're right, that's a good question. Now, sugar as well, please, if it's something you can do without, it's doing you no good at all whatsoever. Yes. Mm. Thank okay. you. Right. That's uh, hypertension. So we try to talk about diabetes. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry, Doctor. No, I, I, I. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but somehow I, I'm out of the screen. I can't see anyone anymore. I don't no, know what's happening. We can see you, don't worry. Yeah, we can see you, don't worry. You know, you ah, I need a slide. Uh, let me see. I okay. need to see the slide. Hold on. Let me can see. You, Maybe. Can you still see? Uh, let me call my uh, Your uh, tech support. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Thank you. Please, there's room for question, you know, I beg or at the end. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, I was just going to ask you a quick question regarding just okay. before you go on to diabetics. Um, okay. So you've spoken about consequences of um, high blood pressure. Yeah. Would you like to just tell us about low blood pressure as well? Just a quick... Thank you so the, much. The that's a very, very good question. Thank you. Now, when you say low blood pressure, you have to tell me what sort of number you have. We're, talk, we're talking about blood pressure 140, 90, and above. So when you say low blood pressure, do you have a number in mind, please? I have no number in mind. I just, okay. um, I just hear people talk about, you know, the perfect, the perfect okay. um, pressure you should have is 140 over 90. And, um, That's right. And they concentrate oh, no. on going above, and they say, but people don't really talk about if you have, low. you know, if, if it's lower or not. Thank you very much. Adam. Now, so right, doctors, will, with the lower your blood pressure, the better for you. Now, the question is, can you function at that blood pressure level? Now, we, the, the primary aim of a physician is not to do any harm to any patient. Now, you, I, I want your blood pressure to be 140, 90. I'm putting you on all these drugs, and you're telling me, doctor, I'm dead. Yes, my blood pressure is 140, 90, but I cannot function. I'm dead. Then there's no point. So we need to treat the patient. So I probably will sustain you at about 160 or whatever makes you function. That is practical. Now, let's say your blood pressure is 100 over 70. I like that. That's what I want to say. But when you could not function, you cannot even get out of bed with 100 over, over 70, then we say, okay, this guy has a low blood pressure. So there's nothing like a low It's what you cannot function with. But in some situation, when people are ill, like when they're septic, they have pneumonia, uh, they have meningitis or something like that, their blood pressure will plummet, it will crash down. Well, when it crash, you have to bring it up. That's a dangerously low blood pressure because it's not enough to perfuse your organs, your kidney, everywhere. So we need to bring that up. And that's where we give people intravenous fluids. We try to transfuse them. We say, all right, come on, let's get this blood pressure up in situation of crisis. But if you are fine and you can function with the blood pressure nicely of 90 over 70, we love it. And it's not causing you any problem. Do I answer the question a bit, Jimmy? Does, does yeah. it? Yes, y y yes, you did. I was just going to do a follow on regarding um, because you hear people who are dizzy, for example, yes. or who are weak. Yes. And they say, yes. oh, wait, the blood pressure is low. That's right. That means you're, you're very right. With those ones, you need to try to treat it carefully. That's when you have to let them function. You know, most doctors, they are just now, as a clinician, you listen to the patient. When, like you said, you, can, you have to let that person enjoy a, a higher level of blood pressure reading that they could function. Yes, you are right. And it's quite common. You put them on the target and doctor, no, I'm not going to take this tablet. Some people, it kills their, uh, their sex life. It ruins them. You know, you're on this blood pressure because you, for you to have sex, you need blood flow to your penis. And when you don't have blood flow to your penis, you cannot have sex. And it's causing problems at home. 
So yeah. this is how doctors need to listen to the patient and pull and sustain them at a pressure that would make them function. Now, now you mentioned that. How did we arrive at this crazy figure that's 140, 90? That's an interesting part. We plot a graph of 5% of the population. We said 95% belong to this group. It's statistics. Okay, all the normal people that are okay, they fall into this uh, Gaussian curve, you know, the Gaussian you know, the curve that we did, distribution curve. Now, there are some guys, hard guys, they, they are not in that curve. They are enjoying themselves at 2.5% uh, after that line, right or left. They will be having high blood pressure and nothing is wrong with them or they won't take any tablet and nothing will happen to them. They are abnormal. They are unusual people. When that kind of people turn up in my clinic, I want to control them by all means. And whatever I'm throwing at them, their body is not taking it. And I'll get to the point and say, I'll just leave because I say, okay, let me see when this guy will pack up, when he's going to die. He's going to die because his, his blood pressure is just, doesn't fit into any role. And the guy will not die. Oh. He will just be there forever. Those are the obscure ones. And they are just about 2.5% of the population that are just sitting outside those four. Okay. Okay. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Can you can you see your screen now? Can you see the slides now? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So let's. Uh, doctor. Okay. Oh. On, on diabetes, I want to ask you a question. Honey versus sugar. Which uh, which is better or both okay. are uh, yeah good for the health? So, so, so what, of, what sort of sugar is good for the body? Is that what you're saying? Uh, so I was I was wondering if uh, honey is a better replacement for sugar or both of them. Should crap. Thank you, thank you so much. We 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 get there. Well, if you don't mind, because we're about to do diabetes now, and I will answer that question, please. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Now, please, can can sorry, can T J go on mute, please? Thank you. Okay. Please, can, can you go? On? Okay. You're right. You're right. So diabetes. Uh, the late time is high sugar level, too much sugar in the body. And um, it's, we use the word starvation in the mix of plenty. You've got the sugar in your body. There is no doubt you'll have too much sugar. But the sugar are not in the right places. They are outside where they are not needed. You need the sugar. Sugar is the energy, is the fuel the body needs. But they need to be intracellular, inside the cells. But in diabetic people, they are not there. They are not in the cells. They are outside the cells because there's a problem. There's a fault. Uh, and um, that is what we call diabetes because that's when you check them and they have a high sugar level because the sugar is not in the, in the places they are supposed to be. Now, they are like, like hypertension, silent killer, no symptoms until it's too late. You start to, oh, I can't sleep. I'm weaning six times uh, overnight. I, you know, I'm just weaning all the time. I need to drink all the time. I'm thirsty all the time. That's metabolic syndrome. You already have symptoms happening. That means there's a danger. I'm losing weight. I'm just fatigued. I'm tired all the time. Those are the symptoms. And those are a bit late in the presentation. That means you've been diabetes for some time. And uh, yes, uh, that, that's uh, diabetes. Now, the, the, it's, a, it's killing the NHS budget. It takes about 10% of the NHS budget, which is more than 20, uh, sorry, if I'm right, by my, that's about almost 20 billion uh, every year because of the amputation, the complications from diabetes. So the government is working so hard to control this so that that money could be saved. And it can be done. It's just simple things that we have to do. We arrive there. Uh, it is present in about 5 to 6% of the population. But that's an underestimation. There are more than that uh, of people with uh, diabetes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, about, yeah about, we're talking about 6% of the population. But when you talk about 6% of the, the ethnic minorities that we're not a significant population or uh, part of that population, it's more than 10% in us. The, 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 the middle class, uh, the lower class people, uh, uh, and, then, and then the ethnic minorities. So common and very vital. Uh, there are two types of diabetes. We used to say type 1, type 2, which is the one we are all used to. Type 1 is when you are a kid and you develop, they just go to, uh, the, the child is weaning at home every night. And the parents are saying, ah, totally, uh, sorry, you're, you are totally, you're totally, you're totally. you don't even know whether they have diabetes. Take them to the hospital, get, them, get their blood checked. They might be diabetic, type 1 diabetes, usually common in children. But we are not using that name anymore, type 1. It's a misnomer. We use the word insulin-dependent diabetes. In those ones, the, the hormones that control sugar in the level is the insulin. 